Thank you for the opportunity to make presentations. I'd like to thank previous presenters who have prepared part of my uh, work. And uh, I would like to talk about stereotaxic radiotherapy in treating large non-operable brain metastasis. Andrei Vladimirovich was telling that large symptomatic metastasis in the brain uh, will require combined method when we remove them, radiate, and receive good local control. But what shall we do when metastases are non-operable? They are large, they give symptoms, uh, but they are in functionally important zones. Uh, they are combined with other multiple metastases, and patient has somatic problem. And uh, the issue of stereotaxic radiotherapy rank first. Here we can use stereotaxic radiotherapy in the mode of radiosurgery, hyperfractionary stage, radiosurgery, or radiation of the whole brain with stereotaxic boost. So we have different methods at our disposal. Let's start that stereotaxic radiosurgery has long occupied leading positions in brain metastasis treatment. But the first work questioned uh, large metastasis radiation. It was published by Gerard. He said that large uh, brain metastasis being uh, radiosurgically radiated uh, will have less local control versus hyperfractionation. Uh, and there were a number of trials. And the first prospective trials were in 2014-15 with small series, but uh, both uh, scientists say that we have to radiate in hyperfractionation mode. We have to define optimum modes of hyperfractionation for large metastasis. In 2017, there was a large meta-analysis concerning those works devoted to hyperfractionation. 95 works um, were analyzed by American author. Only 10 uh, uh, think that uh, uh, that uh, uh, they use retrospective analysis and is devoted to the doses of fractionation. Escalation of dose has better local control versus its reduction. I would like to thank Timur Raisevich, who presented the work issued in 2018 by Alabama authors. There were 72 patients who showed that the most important thing, if we take five fractions and give five gray or six gray, escalation of the dose will result in better local control. And the volume of the lesion is important. If it's more than three centimeters in diameter, they have worse local control. In the year 2019, and again, the scientists from Holland show that hyperfractionation mode is better for local control of large metastasis versus radio surgery. And the higher the dose is, the better local control is. And it's a small series. And uh, in 2019, we receive uh, what we need. We have to study the mode of hyperfractionation. Then guidelines of NCC with recommendations say that if it is three centimeters in diameter, it should be not radio surgery, but stereotactic radio surgery with hyperfractionation mode. And our goal was to define uh, intact uh, uh, inoperable lesions, how we can irradiate what fractionation mode, the influence on local control and toxicity. Since 2013, we started randomized trials proven by the committee. And in order to study the modes of hyperfractionation for large metastases in the brain, non-operable. We randomized patients into three groups. Uh, there were three fractions, eight gray, five, six gray, and seven, five grays. These are not randomized modes, but they are widely used in literature. 
and uh, they are biologically equivalent uh, based on linear uh, quadratic model. And now we com completing recruitment of patients. You see 13 patients, 13, uh, 313 lesions. Those lesions that entered the study are shown here. Uh, patients with primary uh, breast tumor, colorectal, melanoma, kidney cancer, the mean of follow-up was 10 months. The specifics of the patients was that we recruited patients with large brain metastasis, those who were not operated from 2 to 5 centimeter diameter and the mean was 3 centimeter. The volume, the mean volume 8.4 cubic. Uh, the localization was in different zones, most in central gyruses, brainstem. There were patients with uh, uh, temporal metastasis, uh, cerebellum metastasis, occipital zone. So overall survival, our patients survive 13 months and randomization was quite uh, was quite good as to survival rate uh, there is no difference overall survival is identical within the groups an interesting fact is that we compared overall survival with a prognosed uh, one based on GPA scale it happens that they survive better versus if they survive based on GPA scale. That's why stereotactic radiotherapy in hyperfractionation mode is an adequate method for these patients. It, the main point of our study is local control. Local control at 12 months is 70%. It didn't differ in groups of fractionation. We didn't receive differences in groups of fractionation. But as other researchers, we had difference in local control depending on the volume of the target. If the target was less than 7 cubic centimeters, that is 3 centimeters in diameter, local control was 83% one-year local control. We also analyze the influence of localization in the brain tissue, and we didn't receive difference, but uh, different uh, subtypes or types uh, of primary histological form of large metastasis. We received the situation that the most unfavorable was colorectal cancer. It developed worse and local control for such patients is worse. Next point was uh, radiotoxicity. Patients without radiotoxicity at 12 month period survive uh, 70% of patients, uh, uh, those who didn't have serotoxicity, they survive. And patients without symptomatic toxicity account for 80% of patients who receive hyperfractionation mode. Uh, symptomatic radiotoxicity occurs uh, uh, under uh, six months. Radiotoxicity or symptomatic necrosis depends on the mode of fractionation. And uh, there were seven fractions for uh, five gray that we consider less toxic. Only 6% of patients in such group had uh, toxicity. 
also we wanted to define whether the, uh, the uh, location of metastasis influences uh, toxicity and colorectal cancer. Uh, the most unpleasant metastasis is brain metastasis with the worst uh, radiation-related toxicity. Radiation toxicity is not under the influence of the volume of the metastasis. We didn't uh, see the difference in uh, symptomatic radiation-related necrosis in hyperfractionation and the volume of metastasis. One more uh, type of radiosurgery, it's a staged radiosurgery that can be applied to large non-operated brain metastasis. This study has just started. Uh, the idea of this method is the following, that radiosurgery is done in two phases. The first radiosurgery of small dose on the large metastasis in two, four weeks of the metastasis is shrinked and the second dose, larger dose, is applied comparing to the first. All in all, the summarized dose will be large and we will have a good local control. In our studies, this study is conducted in gamma nosh, gamma knife. The volume of metastasis may be shrinked up to by 50 percent. The second fraction may apply. But now we don't have a great number of patients to make sure whether or not this method is preferable. And uh, all in all, the stereotactic radiotherapy in hyperfractionation regime or mode has local control. Uh, the radiation toxicity depends on the mode of fractionation and doesn't depend on the volume of the tumor. Symptomatic toxicity is uh, manif manifests in the first six months. The most unfavorable group of uh, brain metastasis is colorectal cancer. Uh, this uh, kind of method is a preferable method uh, because uh, the overall survival rate is higher compared to prognostic ones. Uh, now I will start the second presentation, WBRT, in case of uh, brain metastasis indications and technique. It's uh, one of the uh, method that is on the, the changes now. It was thought that randomized studies were conducted and it's in reliable methods of brain metastasis treatment. But now it has been modified and people started to restrain from uh, this method application. I'd like to start the presentation from the fact to compare stereotactic radiosurgery and stereotactic methods of brain metastasis with the WBRT in case of metastasis. <laughs> Large meta-analysis of 2017 showed the fact that patients, they don't have uh, the difference in survival, overall survival, in case of WBIT plus uh, radiosurgery. Radio there is no difference, no benefits in overall, overall survival. The dose escalation that uh, is done like radiosurgery plus WBRT or vice versa, it does matter. Statistically significant, it's better local control if we escalate the dose. But uh, the meta-analysis doesn't include hypofractionation that allows to escalate the dose. This, this, this method 
is not beneficial in case of WBRT because dose escalation we can do in the mode of hyperfractionation of large metastasis. But what are the advantages of WBRT? Uh, its benefits when a patient has uh, the threat of the distant metastasis. And if we want to prevent this, uh, WBRT helps in this situation, and it's statistically significant. In this case, the patients will have uh, distant metastasis and a need for salvage therapy. Salvage therapy is the therapy that can not just save a patient, but uh, can uh, give the patients uh, a chance to be treated successfully. Uh, the main disadvantage of WBRT is uh, the reduction in the quality of life and deteriorating of the cognitive functions. If we get back to the radiation, uh, to the, our trial, uh, we mentioned that uh, there is one more method, WBRT plus stereotoxic boost. We have to assess how stereotoxic therapy influences, affects uh, the quality of life. Life. The patients who participated in this trial, they filled in questionnaire during each visit. Uh, then uh, their mental functions uh, were evaluated according to EORTC questionnaire. Uh, we received statistically significant improvement of the quality of life according to the emotional functioning criterion, uh, the reduction in the fatigue. Uh, this value, and also we get statistically significant improvement in case of the insomnia reduction criteria and uh, uncertainty in the future criteria. Also, we compared uh, the quality of life of patients with only stereotactic therapy in hyperfractionation without WBRT uh, with the data that uh, RTC trials the third phase where WBRT was studied plus radio surgery or surgical removal of metastasis. We use uh, the WHO criteria of the overall conditions. We didn't receive the reduction in function. We evaluated physical functioning and uh, the results didn't drop down. Uh, we assessed uh, the increase in fatigue in the long term. Uh, the, uh, we didn't see this in hyperfractioning, unlike uh, WBIT. And there is no deterioration of the cognitive function up to one year. Uh, and it was uh, the case in the randomized treatment uh, trial of the third phase. In case of large inoperable brain metastasis, uh, WBRT should be postponed as uh, the um, treatment of the last resort. resort. It happens that for these patients, there is no need for WBRT, salvage therapy, and close monitoring is more important. And uh, WBRT, for whom it should be applied? Patients with the dissemination, with leptomeningeal progression, with the poor functional status. In this case, WBRT may improve their condition and uh, improve the quality of life. In 2016-2017, uh, the large randomized trial, QUARTS, uh, was finished. It was conducted in England. Uh, it's a multi-center study trial, uh, 105 patients. Uh, they were the patients with the low functional status. Uh, they couldn't be exposed to radiosurgery. 
uh, they had brain metastasis and they thought uh, that uh, the quality of life can be improved. It was the group of steroid therapy, sustaining, maintaining therapy, and WBRT group. There is no difference in survival rate in reduction of the steroid therapy. There were no any. Uh, there was no. Uh, there, there was no any differences. Patients live uh, the similar life time, but the quality of life uh, was affected due to the puritis, uh, alopecia. Uh, they uh, were not in their families. Uh, we exclude this method for patients who are at their final stage. To whom we can use this method for? It's uh, the patient who uh, First of all, patients uh, with brain metastasis, uh, they need stereotactic therapy with different fractionation modes. In the future, we are to select right medical therapy. The question was asked whether or not it's important for us the type or subtype of the tumor. If the tumor has activating mutations, is uh, there are reserves for systemic treatment, uh, we hope that we can postpone WBRT or can avoid WBRT. If patients in a good functional status with the dissemination of brain metastasis and there is no activating mutations. The systemic therapy reserves uh, have been exhausted. Uh, in this case, uh, WBRT can be considered for these patients. The clinical example, female patient, 33 years, brain breast cancer, HER2, new 3 plus, uh, target therapy, lapatinib, with chemotherapy. She had her hematological toxicity. The treatment discontinued. Uh, the massive intracranial progression happened with the multiple dissemination of lesions in the posterior fossa with the light lesion in the subcortex uh, nucleus with neurological deficit. We decided to apply WBR with a stereotoxic boost for large lesion or with the following administration of the systemic therapy. She was, she had WBRT, hematological functions were restored. She started to receive lapatinib with xylode in uh, now in 10 months she has the better conditions. These patients uh, do need this kind of methods. WBRT is still in our arsenal. Uh, we have to go a bit different way. How to reduce the toxicity of this method, of this treatment? In the guidelines of 2019, we see where to go. There are three areas. First of all, we should consider the modes of fractionation, uh, maintain uh, and uh, uh, systemic therapy. Let's start with the modes of fractioning. Meta-analysis 2018, Sauls and, uh, and authors showed uh, that uh, if we reduce biological dose in WBRT, we can see the statistically significant results. So the standardized modes, 30 grades in 10 fractions, will be more adequate for treatment of brain metastasis uh, in case of WBRT. The dose escalation uh, hasn't proved to be statistically significant. The overall, uh, in terms of overall survival rate and improvement in in the neurological fraction functions. Uh, 30 grays in 10 fractions, this kind of modes, it's optimized. In 2013, uh, the Memantin uh, article was issued. So it's not a toxic drug, it's well tolerated. And patients showed that there is less reduction of cognitive functions. 
but this but the duration of, of cognitive function was statistically significantly better in the group of Lamantin versus placebo group and it is in the guidelines that Lamantin uh, has to be indicated for patients with WBRT and uh, another approach that uh, allows to decrease toxicity in whole brain radiation is using new equipment. We'd like to thank our medical physicist, uh, Mrs. Antipova, and using a true beam system, we look at whole brain uh, radiation therapy differently. Receiving dynamic arches, we can receive better coverage of the brain, and histogram dose volume, we see better coverage and reduction of dose uh, load on critical organs. And these methods allow us to well, identify uh, the zones, decrease the load on hippocampus, and if patient previously received radio surgery and hyperfractionation, and then uh, local necrosis developer can identify necrotic zones. And additionally, we can perform stereotactic boosts if these are large metastases will be at 10 fractions 3 gray, and metastases that are larger require larger dose, we can give 10 fractions 4 gray. Another protection is if we have pachymeningeal progressions related to metastasis in the skull, vein, and uh, we can uh, radiate all uh, bones with boost on large lesions compressing the brain and exclude the whole uh, brain, not only hippocampus, from radiation. And we can gradually reduce toxicity level in WBRT and leave and make this method uh, well more available. Thank you. Thank you very much for most interesting presentation. Questions? Thank you for the presentation. What are the opportunities in treating patients uh, with radiotherapy, those who already received WBRT at primary stage, plus with systemic therapy, quite good indicators concerning control of lesions of other organs have been achieved, but there is progression in the brain. What can we do? Thank you for the question. Such situation is quite common. In the first turn, these are method of serotactic radiotherapy. They will depend on the size uh, of the volume. Uh, radio surgery, we can do repeat radio surgery after WBRT, as well as hyperfractionation if the lesions have become larger. I would like to say I cannot fully agree that we have to um, WBRT. Uh, it's quite often that uh, these are young patients without leptomeningeal dissemination, but a lot of metastasis in the brain. I hope, well, uh, I, I also said we shouldn't refuse from that. But my question, second question is, shall we give a choice to the patients? They must understand that when they offer WBRT and probability to come back to radio surgeon uh, goes down by twice and the risk of relapse uh, outside the zone, I mean intracranial progression uh, goes down by twice. Of course, they have to know that WBRT reduces cognitive functions. Should we give this choice to a 
patient. Does he want to come back for repeat treatment or take a risk and lose a bit of his cognitive functions? Because this is the decision they are making for him. I think he must have a choice. Stereotaxis, well, I, I, I do not doubt if there are 10, 12 uh, control collisions that we can treat stereotactically, but, uh, but adding WBRT, shall we give choice to a patient? Thank you. I hope that my presentation has shown that we don't want to get rid of uh, or refuse from WBRT. This method has the right to exist. It has to be at the disposal. But the question you are asking, yes, patient must always decide for himself. We can also say that WBRT uh, as a, uh, a repeat is uh, as a, uh, repeated uh, is more difficult than radio surgery. Uh, there are a lot of driver mutations that with target therapy change the development uh, in the biology of tumor survival of patient. In my study that I've shown renal cancer, if previously uh, those were radio-resistant humans. Uh, now, patients after stereotactic radiotherapy have better local control on the background of target therapy, and we refer them more often to the groups with favorable prognosis. If target therapy helps us cope with multiple brain metastases in their control, probably patients won't need to go through WBRT at this stage. Maybe this function will be at the reserve, and she should uh, use it when target therapy will stop being efficacious. But if it is the first stage and there is WBRT, and next stage, systemic therapy will not work. There will be extracranial metastasis that will give progression. After WBAT, what will you do in this situation? How will you help a patient? No, Mike. I'm t uh, yeah, I mean breast cancer as well. You know, this is a discussion which is really interesting, but we are time limited. Well, in continuation, if, is there a place for repeat radiation? In which mode and when? For uh, for repeat WRT, yes, these methods have been described. Of course, uh, this is, uh, well, desperate. Uh, it's a desperation. 20 gray, but uh, are given, but there is no data that patients will live better.